Okay, Foundations of Math 20, 7.8. This is our last section. Uh, in this section, we are doing lots of problem solving. We're creating equations, quadratic equations. Uh, we're graphing them. We're looking for intersection points, intercepts, all that sort of stuff, and how that relates to the answers in the problem. So it's solving problems using these quadratic models. Okay, so I'm going to skip down to example two here. To start with that one to show you how uh, this would work. So I'll get you to, I'm going to pass out the calculators here and then I'll get you to, uh, uh, to do this with me so you make sure you know how to graph. So in example two here in your textbook it says this, determine three consecutive odd integers if the square of the largest integer is 33 less than the sum of the squares of the two smaller. Okay, so now you really have to break this this is very wordy, okay? And it's not like a real life situation like there's a boat that's sailing down the harbor and this stuff, okay? It's, it's, it's algebra stuff, right? This is very wordy. So you just have to take your time in forming the equation, okay? But just take it little bits at a time. So first of all, let's talk about three consecutive. You should know consecutive means one after the other. So there's no skipping. Odd integers is just the odd ones. So three, five, seven, nine, those would be consecutive odd integers. So obviously we don't know what these integers are. It gives us uh, information about how they're related to one another. So we want to um, you know, use a variable that's an unknown and we want to build an equation describing uh, the situation in the question. So consecutive odd integers, so we need three of them. If the square of the largest integer, okay, so the largest one in our list, we're going to square it, that's 33 less than the sum of the squares of the two smaller. Okay, so we just kind of kind of start somewhere. Um, any odd integer is can be written as two x, well two x plus one or two x minus one doesn't really matter. Even if you did, even if you did x is your first odd integer, and then x plus two is your is your next consecutive odd integer. If you did this, you'd be okay. Okay, you probably do that that too. But let's follow what the book says here. Um, 2x, this 2x by itself would be an even integer. That's the definition of an even integer. It can be evenly divided by 2. So you could do either 2x plus 1 or 2x minus 1 for your first um, odd integer. They chose 2x minus 1. Okay. So we have 2x minus 1, then we would have 2x plus 1 would be the next one, then 2x plus 3 would be the third consecutive odd integer. Okay. Again, you could use these uh, the two if you want that should work as well. Uh, your x value would be your first odd integer. But because they just went with the definition of what odd integers would be. Okay, so um, the square of the largest okay, is 33 less than the sum of the other two. Okay, So the largest one is this. The square of it is 2x plus 3 squared. Now this is 33 less than the sum of the squares of the other ones. So if this is 33 less than what's going to be on the other side, you want to add 33 so that they're equal. Okay? So if you guys are, you know, so many years less than me in age, right, um, then I have, to, I have to take mine and subtract or yours and add. So the smaller one and add. Okay? So 33 less. That means this one is the smaller one than what's going to be over here. <coughs> and what's on the other side? The sum of the squares of the two smaller ones. So here's the two smaller ones, there and there. We're going to square them and add them. Okay? The sum, so look at this carefully. The sum, there's the plus, of the squares of the other two. So there's the smallest one squared and the next one squared. So once you get your equation set up, you want to just read the question over again and just double, triple check to make sure you got your equation. This is the most important part. So three consecutive odd integers, here they are. Okay, the square of the largest, okay, so it's going to have the largest one squared, is 33 less than the sum of the other uh, two. So add 33 will make it equal with the sum of the squares of the other two. Does everyone see that that equation is written correctly? Yeah. Any questions about that? The tricky part is going to be this. The, the square of the largest is 33 less. People will say that and say automatically square the largest minus 33. Okay. 
but you have to think of it in terms of an equation. If it's less, if it's less, 33 less, so you have to add 33 to get it to equal, and equal is the big thing. We want the equation. All right, so if we have our equation now, now we stretch back and we think back to what we learned before in the, in the chapter, and we, ha we have a number of options that we could do to solve this now, right? And one of those options is to, um, you know, uh, graph the corresponding equation, uh, quadratic, for each side. So we do y equals that one, and we do y equals this one. And that's the option that uh, you can take here. Use your graphing technology uh, and our calculator. And so we're going to do that. So this is the, the snapshot of the screen. Let's see if we can reproduce this screen, just to make sure we know what the process is. So get your calculator out, turn it on. Going to go to the y equals screen right here, so it looks like this. And we're going to punch uh, each of these in <laughs> separately. So take a moment to do that, and I'll do that up here on my on mine as well. Okay, so let's everybody do this to make sure that you kind of go through the motions here. Make sure that you can do it. And if you're sharing a calculator, just you want know, to watch what your partner's doing. So many of you will have a standard window here, so I'll start with that. We are going to have to adjust the window so we can see what's happening. Um, okay. Okay, so hopefully you're pretty close to being done. So let's just make sure we got this right. 2x plus 3 squared, got that, plus 33. Okay, that's the first one, y1. The second one is 2x minus 1 squared plus 2x plus 1 squared. Okay, that looks that looks right. Now if you graph that, depending on oh sorry. De depending on what your screen looks like in a standard window, this is what mine looks like. I only see one. And I should have two quadratics here. Right? I should have two quadratics. So what that means is you're going to have to change the window. And of course we see, you know, down here in this visual that the window is actually you know, quite a bit altered from a standard window. So I know that I'm going to have to go up and I'm probably going to want to narrow my window a bit here. So let's hit window and you can change all of the different uh, things. So X minimum, okay, uh, looks like we could go to negative 5 maybe. Uh, X maximum, we could also go maybe 5, let's try that. Now the Y is up and down, so if we did negative 2 and then the y max is the big thing. We need to make this pretty large. Um, now, seeing this, you know where you kind of have to go. But if you're just guessing and you don't know, you might start with something really large like 100 or 150. Okay, so that that's what that's what maybe you would think of doing. And you would graph it. Okay, I can see the one there. Can you see the other one? Oh, that's pretty good. Now. The thing is, you want to make sure that you have the intersection points in view. I, here I have one intersection point, which looks like this might give me one of my solutions, right? But the other one is off screen, so you're not going to be able to determine what that is. So I need to go up higher and maybe a little to the right, I'm not sure. So I need to extend my Y max. So go down to the Y max and let's make that 250. We'll regraph and see if we can see both solutions. There's one, and there's, oh, okay, pretty close. I'm going to do my x max as well. I'm going to make that a little bit, um, a little bit wider, okay? So try and get your calculator screen to look something like this, okay? So you can see clearly one, and there's a second intersection point over there. So now that we have this, and we look at this, um, remember the intersection points between you know, the equation for this side and the equation for this side, those intersection points would represent at least possible uh, solutions, right? There may be some restrictions in the question. For example, 
if um, we're going to find a solution down here and a solution over here, one of the solutions, as you see here, negative 2, it's going to be um, uh, negative, okay? And one of the solutions looks like it might be positive. So if the question said they have to be just positive, then you might have to be careful and you might have to reject one of those possible solutions. But we don't know about that for sure. Let's just go back and make sure that we can get this. So the intersection points for your calculator, second function trace, and again, you should remember this. We want to find intersection, so go down to five, or just hit the number five button. Okay, now it's gonna say first curve, <coughs> second curve, so first curve, yes, second curve, sure, and guess. Now, depending on which one you wanna guess first, I'm gonna go back, so just cursor back, and I'm gonna put my cursor close to the intersection point over here, because I wanna find this one first. And so you let it think for a second. Negative 2, 34, and that's what we have here in the book, right? Negative 2, 34. So what does that mean for us? That means for us that one possible x value is negative 2. And the other x value, you do that the exact same way. So second function trace, intersect, first curve. Okay, it's, here's the first curve listed there, yes. There's the second curve, yes. Now you want a cursor over to the other side of the screen to tell the calculator I want to know this intersection point. Okay, so just somewhere close and hit enter. It should give you the other one. 5202. <clears throat> okay, so x equals 5 would be our other one. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. Any questions or any issues? Because you are going to have to do all of this on your own come test time, right? Uh, yeah, on the graphing calculator. Yeah, it's going to take you, I mean, it might take you half an hour to do this question without a calculator. So, yeah, you're going to need to know how to do this on the calculator, yeah. That's part of, uh, part of what, what, we, what you need to know in this class, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay. All right, so we're not done yet, right? The answer is not negative 2 and 5 can't just circle that and be done with it because the question says determine three consecutive odd integers that satisfy this so if uh, now we have to go back here the first one is 2x minus 1 so if x equals negative 2 what's the first one that's negative 4 negative 5 and then we have uh, negative 3 and then we have negative 1 does that look right so that's the first set according to this solution. The second set would be, this would be 9, and then the next one would be 11 and 13. Okay. So the last thing you want to do is you want to make sure you check. Okay. So just check to make sure that this it all makes sense. So the largest, uh, let's see, determine three consecutive odd integers if the square of the largest is 33 less than the sum of the squares of the other two. Hmm. Okay. The square of the largest plus 33 should equal negative 3 squared plus negative 1 squared. Okay. Let's see if this works. Does this, does this work, you think? 25 plus 33? Hmm. Does that equal 9 plus 1? <coughs> yeah. 25 plus 33? Well, that's like 58, and that's 10, isn't it? So we got an issue here. This, these ones might not work, right? Let's check this one. 9 squared um, plus 33 equals, uh, I'm sorry, thir oh, my bad. Did anyone check, did anyone guess that? Anyone see what I did there? Anyone see what I did there? No. Okay, so what I did here is largest. We're dealing with negative values here, and I started doing the same thing. So negative values, it says the largest. So guess what? Everybody see it now? Is negative 5 the largest of those? No. So you've got to be careful there. Right? Okay, shout it out if you see something. So the largest is actually in this group is negative 1. That's technically the largest value, negative 1. So negative 1, and then we have negative 5 and negative 3. So let's try this again. So 1 plus 33 is 25 plus 9. So 34 equals 34. Okay, That seems to work. 
Now those work. Okay, you set that check up properly. And the other one here, um, we're going to start with uh, 2 times, uh, okay. So we've got 13 squared plus 33 uh, equals uh, 9 squared plus 11 squared. So what's 13 squared? 169, is it? Plus 33, 9 squared is 81, plus 121. Uh, so what's this? Uh, 90, 202. And 81 plus 121 is 202. Okay. All right. So do you notice anything from our uh, points of intersection and our values in this check? There is a connection here. You see this? Look at negative 2, 34. That's the value for the intersection point. So guess what? 34 is actually the value, the y value for this one, and the y value for this equation. Okay, see that? And then 5 would be our x value here, and then 202 is the y value for this one, and the y value for this one. Okay? Okay, so you would finish off by saying the consecutive integers that would work for this question would be, so the consecutive odd integers would be negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, and 9, 11, 13. Done. Okay? Do you have to figure out both sets? Uh, if there's two possible sets, and the question does not say um, find the positive odd integers, or just find the negative odd integers. So if there's two sets, then yes, you'd have to uh, you have to you have to label them both. You'd have to mention them both. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and of course we go back to the textbook now. Oops, where is it? Go back to the textbook and we take a look at this here. Um, yeah, they say right here the consecutive odd integers could be negative five, three, and one, and nine, eleven, thirteen. Okay. Questions? All right. No questions? So, the key ideas for this uh, section a function, a graph, or a table of values can represent a relation. Use the form that is most helpful for the context of the problem. Depending on the information that's given, you can use a quadratic function in vertex form or in standard form to model the situation. So we created, um, uh, we created an equation, given the information, for example, 2. And then we used uh, graphing technology to find the intersection points. Okay? The other thing that you could do is use the quadratic uh, formula right, to find out what the roots are. That might help you in the, uh, in the question as well. So there is an example here where that's, uh, that's the case. Okay. So I'll get you to just look over the other examples as needed uh, when you do your assignment here for 7.8. Any questions? Assignment is 7.8, 1, 2, 4, and 8, and I'll show you the textbook uh, for that one as well. Yeah. Here's number four. Eight. <laughs>